speaker. We should all be very excited because she's doing her 10th speech, which is completing the Competent Communicator book, I guess, or project. And today she's going to try to get the gears in our brain going by talking about one of her greatest inspirations. Um, could we get her evaluator for the objectives? The objective for your 10th and final speech for your Competent Communicator is to inspire the audience by appealing to noble, noble motives and challenge the audience to achieve a higher level of beliefs or achievement. Appeal to the audience needs and emotions using stories, anecdotes, and quotes to add drama. Avoid using notes. The timing meta is 8 to 10 minutes. Perfect. So let's welcome Amy Pratt with All at Once. All at Once. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, well, most welcome guests, my name is Amy and I am a musician. Now I don't play in a band or a symphony, in fact, I don't actually play a musical instrument. However, I believe that music is an important part of all of us, and by realizing this and embracing it, you can all become musicians. From the very beginning of time, music has been a key part of our civilization. Music is how we learned things, how we remembered our history, how we praised higher beings, and how we expressed joy. However, I believe that we are forgetting that. I believe that we are losing our music. I'll tell you why I feel that way, but more importantly, why I feel that music is such an essential part of life, and how I learned to embrace the importance of music in my life. Music, fellow Toastmasters, is the universal language, and we need to remember how to feel and how to speak through it. It's something that I learned from one of my first great loves in music, which was, believe it or not, the Japanese Indies rock scene. <laughs> now, whenever I tell people that, I usually get a pretty funny look. Why would you listen to music in Japanese? You don't speak that language. It was a question that took me to, a while to really understand the answer to, but the moment that I did is still vividly etched in my memory. It was on my first trip to Japan in 2005, my first time in a foreign country where I didn't speak the language. And while I was there, I was insane enough to go on a day trip halfway across the country, six hours each way there and back all by myself, just to see a rock festival. My epiphany came on the final leg of my journey home as I stood on a train platform at midnight. I put on a CD I'd bought in Tokyo by my favorite artist and heard a new song that completely overwhelmed me with beauty. The sweet strains of the violin in duet with warm, clear tenor vocals. And after my crazy day of adventure, something about it just made me stop. The next seven minutes and 15 seconds are still one of my most vivid memories of Japan just standing all alone on that train platform with that beautiful music. I remember how still and dark the night was and the slight chill of the night air on my skin. And I remember feeling this overwhelming sense of something eternally beautiful and good and so much greater than simply living. I realized in that moment that I perfectly understood what I was listening to, that the emotion in the music completely transcended all barriers of language and race to speak to me and tell me how beautiful life was. Music is the universal language. Music has also been my inspiration and my strength. I can always find a song to cheer me when I'm sad or to calm me if I'm frustrated. And there's no time that music was more important to me than on November 15, 2010. It was my four-year anniversary with the woman I married, who I thought was the love of my life until she told me on our anniversary that she wanted to date other people. I felt like my world had dropped out from under me. I felt betrayed. I felt furious. I felt completely terrified. I devoted four years of my life. I'd married this woman. What was I going to do? I don't remember everything we fought about that night but I remember sitting next to her in bed for hours while she slept, just trying 
desperately to find something to focus on in the maelstrom of my emotions. And as my computer played through my music library, these words reached out and spoke to me. We could lie to each other and say that we're so happy. It's easy when you're young and you still want it so badly. I feel my heart pounding and I think I might scream. I can tell you that you're all I ever wanted, dear. I can utter every word you've ever hoped to hear. I shudder when I think that I might not be here forever. It was so perfectly evocative of the torment that I was going through. I listened again and again and to other songs by the same artist, and I began to realize that what I was going through was normal. People went through this all the time. People survived, and I could too. By the time I was finally able to find sleep, I wasn't afraid of divorce anymore. I'd thought through all the possibilities and realized that no matter what happened, I was strong and I was going to be okay. I know I would not have been able to put myself back together so easily if it hadn't have been for the connection I found with that music. I wanted so badly to thank the people that created it and to tell them what a difference it made to me. And it frustrated me that I couldn't. It frustrates me now. The popular music has become about marketability. Musicians are made into these untouchable idols and they're forced play it safe instead of innovate. Not only does that stifle their creativity, but it also eclipses so many smaller artists who are just trying to reach out and share their passion with the world. How are we supposed to experience music in a world like that? In a world where radio stations play the same 12 songs over and over just to appease their advertisers? And when a band has hundreds of thousands of fans or when they play in a faraway location, how can I thank them for the work that they do? How can I give back when I've been given so much? On November 15th, 2011, I took a trip to Toronto with the sole purpose of seeing a rock show. It's kind of a theme in my life. <laughs> the group was called the Airborne Toxic Event. And it was the same band who had helped me through that difficult night exactly one year previous. People told me I was crazy to go so far and to spend so much money just to buy a $30 ticket to a three-hour show. But I felt that it was important for me to be there. It felt like kismet that their only Canadian tour date was that night, exactly one year. And I wanted to somehow show my appreciation, even if it was just as another face in the crowd. When the vocalist, Mikhail Jolette, introduced the title track to their album all at once, he said, the important thing that happens with music is between your ears. We've played over 300 shows in the past year, and in every country, every city, people tell us about playing our music at weddings and at funerals and when their children are born, just to get them through a rough day. There is nothing more gratifying as an artist. We wanted to say thank you very much for that, and so we wrote this song for all of you. We grow old all at once, and it comes like a punch in the gut, in the back, in the face. When it seems someone's lied and our parents have died, then we hold on to each other in their place. And I feel the water rising around us, maybe that's okay. And I feel the world changing all at once. I guess we'll be okay. I can't pay a musician into fame and fortune as much as I'd like to. But I can experience that sense of connection. And maybe that's what music is really all about. Music is the universal language. It connects us. It inspires us. Don't take that for granted. The next time you listen to music, whether you've heard the song a hundred times or you're hearing it for the first time, open yourself up and let something happen between your ears. Seek out new music. Visit a local live venue. Check out the band your friend raves about. But let music create for you something so much greater than simply living. Music is an essential part of life. And when we realize that and embrace it, then we all become musicians. <laughs>